There are plenty of solid options when it comes to fighters on the PlayStation, but one that often gets overlooked is Tobol 2. Now, the first iteration did see a Western release, but unfortunately its sequel stayed in Japan, which is a real big shame as it builds upon and surpasses nearly every aspect of the original by introducing many new elements that make it the best way to experience the franchise. All of the characters make a return, as well as several new additions that all offer up their own unique style of fighting. The standout aspect though has to be the quest mode. It sees you building up your character's attributes, trading with merchants, catching monsters, the list just goes on and on. It's a really engrossing feature of the game, and one that's not often found in others on the market. The minute to minute gameplay is tight and responsive, with the main goal being that to perform a series of combos that at first can be quite tricky to execute, mainly because of the timing that can be quite demanding and unusual. But after some time with the game, it all soon becomes second nature. So if you're on the lookout for a new fighting game, Tobol 2 is one that I highly recommend. Naketsu is essentially a side-scrolling beat-em-up that gives the player the option of playing one of three different characters. Naturally, each of them differ not only in appearance, but in ability as well. From the fast and nimble to the slow-paced and more powerful, they each offer different ways to enjoy the game, so trying out each of them is a good idea to find one that suits you best. Now, the control setup is extremely simple. You have a jump, basic attack, and a super ability that sacrifices a portion of your life upon performing it, as well as a double jump, a dash, and a throw that when combined provide a good amount of variety to beat down your enemies. As you would expect, a ton of items and temporary power-ups litter the battleground as well. Visually, the experience is nothing spectacular, but what stands out is the level design that borders on the bizarre at times. From the city streets to the insides of a whale, the developers clearly had a lot of fun designing the game, and it really shows, right down to the enemies themselves, which are just as peculiar. Overall, Naketsu is a solid beat-em-up, and although it's not going to light the world on fire, it's still a blast to play and well and truly deserves the attention for anyone fond of the genre. Speed Power Gunbike is a rather unique title that mixes various different styles of play to create something it can call its own. The game is set in Japan and takes place in the near future, where versatile machines known as gunbikes have become the norm and allow their users to take advantage of the unique abilities they offer. The first is racing, which sees you travelling at breakneck speeds, with the second being that of a combat mech. What makes it neat is that these two states can be switched on the fly, which introduces some really interesting gameplay opportunities. The most important aspect of the game is the inclusion of something known as energy. At the start of each run you possess an amount of 100, with it slowly trickling down every few seconds and every time you take damage. The main objective is to simply get in and out before your energy reaches zero. Sure it sounds simple, but in execution it's a totally different affair, largely due to the level design that at times feel like mazes. A variety of bosses also occupy the world and make for some of the more trickier moments in the game. Thankfully your bike possesses a super attack, known as your G power, it results in destroying everything on the screen in style, and soon becomes a really handy ability. If you've never played it and are looking for something fresh, Superpower Gunbike is a great option. The first thing that will strike many when it comes to Panzer Bandit are the outstanding sprites that are implemented throughout the game. Each character, enemy and location literally pops to life on the screen with a clear level of mastery. Gameplay wise it's just as impressive with several modes available for the player to digest. You start off with 4 characters and are tasked with making your way through 8 stages whilst utilising a ton of different abilities. You have 2 basic attacks as well as a projectile shot and special attack and mixing them together to perform combos is the name of the game. Complementing these basic attacks is the super ability that becomes available once filling up a gauge. Naturally, each character also slightly differs in speed and power that makes trying out each essential to find one that suits your style of play. Another aspect that helps Panzer Bandit excel is the sheer level of unlockables that prolong the replay value. There's a total of 8 extra characters that can be unlocked by completing the story mode, and to top it all off, a multiplayer mode is included as well that allows you to take on the action with a friend. I really cannot express my love for this game enough. In my eyes it is one of if not the best beat em up on the system. If you've never played it, you owe it to yourself to do so. 
If there is one word that could describe poppin' tanks in a nutshell, it would have to be fun. The game literally oozes charm, but at the same time offers a serious amount of depth in its gameplay. It's essentially a one-on-one -on -one shooting game that pits a variety of tanks against each other, with the entire experience being split up into two separate modes, those being the story and something known as Tank World. But what makes poppin' tanks so good has to be the sheer level of customization that's afforded to the player. You initially start off with 8 tanks, with many more becoming available throughout the course of the game. Each of them can be tailored to your specific style of play, with over 300 separate parts to earn and choose from. Various short and long range weaponry makes the cut, as well as a slew of cosmetic items that really help bring a sense of personality to your creations. One inclusion that really helps the overall quality of the gameplay is how the camera is implemented during play. It automatically locks onto your opponent, with the various obstacles that might obscure your view automatically becoming transparent, as to not disrupt the on-screen action. It's a welcome inclusion that makes Pop and Tanks all the more enjoyable to play. If you're looking for something to play with friends, Pop and Tanks is the perfect answer. Treasure are one of the most beloved developers when it comes to games of old. From shooters to platformers, a huge variety of incredible experiences have been developed by them, one being Rakugaki Showtime. It's basically an arena fighter that shares many similarities with the likes of Power Stone. It sees you taking on a group of enemies, with your sole task being that to take everyone out. Of course, there's a huge variety of ways to do exactly that, from boulders to missiles and your main weapon, the smiley face. Now, the smiley face starts out happy at the beginning beginning of each match, but increases in anger each time it hits something. Eventually it becomes so angry that it starts flashing, and if a character picks up the smiley face at this time, they will perform a super attack which can inflict huge damage on enemies. On the other hand, some characters rely more on hand-to-hand -hand fighting instead, inflicting damage with special moves that range from blowing up half of the screen to smacking people with their gigantic asses. The pace is very quick, as most characters can zip across the screen and throw a barrage of objects with little hesitation. Although some strategy is involved, most of the game relies on reflexes and maneuvering. In my eyes, Rakugaki Showtime is one hell of a game, especially if you have some friends who are up for playing it as well. The PS1 was home to an impressive range of platformers, but one that seems to have all but been forgotten is The Adventure of Little Ralph. It shares much in common with the likes of Castlevania, and presents a weapon-based platformer with a lovable charm. You play as Ralph as you set out to free a damsel in distress, which is all a bit cliche if I'm honest, but when it comes to platformers, the story is never usually the standout aspect. As Ralph, you possess a wide range of abilities that utilize your sword. You have a basic swing, as well as a downward thrust, and a special charge that can block incoming projectiles. A selection of items also make the cut, from shields to several power-ups that adorn you with extra skills, such as longer reach and the ability to shoot fireballs. But it doesn't stop there, as Ralph is joined by his lovable companion, Furio, that can help you out in some real tight situations. Now if there's one aspect of the game which really stands out, it has to be the boss battles. They easily become the best part of the game, and each offer an increasing level of challenge as you progress. The best part? They each take on an entirely new form of play, and turn the game into a sort of 2D fighter, which shares much in common with the likes of Street Fighter. There's only about 4 of these encounters throughout the adventure, but they manage to mix up the gameplay and add an extra layer of depth to the overall experience. The Adventure of Ralph is an absolute marvel among old school 2D platformers, and more than deserves a playthrough by anyone who never got round to doing so. The PS1 was no stranger to incredible shooters. With the likes of Iron Hander and Gradius to name a couple, players were literally spoiled for choice. But one that often gets overlooked is Harmful Park. As with most side-scrolling shooters, the gameplay largely revolves around your ship and the several power-ups which you can earn along the way. What makes it different is that every weapon is based around food, from jelly beans to pies and ice cream. It's a pretty novel approach that lends the game a real sense of charm. Complementing these weapons are a range of items and power-ups that will help you deal with the waves of enemies that come your way. At times, they can be relentless in their approach, and this is where Harmful Park truly comes into its own. It's a game that's not afraid to challenge the player, but with several difficulty modes available as well, the option is always there if you want to take it down a peg. Once you've made your way through the main attraction, there are several minigames that help prolong the experience as well. The first one, Punch Ball, resembles Pong and requires two players to try and hit a ball into the player's goal. The second being Sky Circuit, which is essentially a racing 
Action mode that controls differently from the main game. And finally Tank Battle, which is an overhead combat game that resembles combat on the Atari 2600. And in all honesty, they're an absolute blast to play. If you're a fan of the genre, Harmful Park is well worth checking out. I've always been a huge fan of the Macross games and originally got into them on the PSP. It wasn't until recently that I learned of VFX2 and it has soon become one of my favourites on the PlayStation 1. Now it's loosely based on the anime of the same name and sees players jumping into a wide range of impressive machines that have the ability to transform into several different states, those primarily being a fighter jet and incredibly powerful mechs. They grant you a wide selection of abilities in which to take on the mission based adventure. As you would expect each machine can be fully customized with a generous amount of weapon loadouts and visual touches that allow you to cater each to your specific style of play. May that be up close and personal or attacking from a distance, there are plenty of options that facilitate each way you can approach a mission. On top of this, several character specific abilities are included that manage to help out during the more intense situations you'll find yourself in. Out on the field, the controls are tight and responsive, allowing you to engage the enemy with confidence. And visually, the game is stunning and really shows what the PlayStation 1 was capable of when in the hands of the right developers. Each mission is unique and presents a variety of different locations to the player. From dense cities to sun-drenched beaches and nighttime flights, it just never gets old. So if this one passed you by, now would be the perfect time to jump in and give it a go for yourself. As many will know, I'm a huge fan of Hideo Kojima's work, from the Metal Gear Solid series to the more recent offerings like Death Stranding, but his early work is still some of the greatest, especially Police Notes. As the player, you assume the role of Jonathan Ingram, a private detective who is plunged into an intriguing tale involving his ex-wife and his past that comes back to haunt him. Now, the most impressive aspect of the game has to be the beautifully drawn cutscenes that help bring the narrative to life. For avid fans of Kojima's work, you're bound to notice a few familiar faces along the way as you unravel the mystery and soak in the intoxicating world the game presents. Gameplay wise, it's a rather simple affair that sees you controlling a cursor on the screen. It allows you to access various interactive elements that allow you to perform actions such as traveling, conversing with NPCs and taking part in a variety of minigames such as shooting. It's nothing groundbreaking, especially by today's standards, but it really suits the experience and in all honesty, I wish similar games of this type would still be getting made today. Well, that does it for today today's video. Don't forget to hit subscribe and follow me on all of the socials to stay up to date on future videos and to take part in giveaways. You can also join our growing community on Discord and meet many like-minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd also like to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters, Rhino, Skill Jim, Nano, Steve and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining our Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon, you'll find the links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I'll catch you in the next one.